Hey guys, in this video I'll be reviewing Fire Emblem Engage, with the usual topics, story, gameplay, graphics and music. But prior to that, I just wanna say that in this particular case I'll be using several comparisons between older entries, and of course, despite being a fan, I'll be brutally honest, what I liked, what wasn't good, and so on. So let's begin with the story. In this one the story presents us the main character, Aelair, who's breaching enemy lines along his friends to reach the final boss room. Once Elair reaches it, the final confrontation begins, with the former party as the victorious one. Once this conflict ends, we are presented other characters who saw our MC awake after 1000 years. Things may seem peaceful, but it doesn't take long before finding that enemies have appeared out of nowhere in this sacred place. In this first battle, after many years, Elair remembers the ring's power and is able to engage with Mart to save the day. From this point onwards, these characters will find themselves engulfed in a war against unknown foes. That is pretty much the beginning, and with all honesty, I thought it was a good first start, but it didn't take long for me to find out that this story was, if not a clone of Fire Emblem Awakening, something quite similar in many things. And while I understand that it was an important game to still get releases to this day, it is time to move on from that point. Because in the past entries we have seen many characters who have a link in one way or another with dragons. And just to prove part of Engage and Awakening being pretty much the same, both main characters come up from a peculiar slumber with an unknown past. There is a chapter where the party has to escape because of a dire situation. At all lights it took inspiration from the general overworld from Awakening. This one I don't really mind, it was a cool feature. They present for plot reasons what happened in the past in a particular way, and we can go with many, many examples. Engage feels like the developers tried to combine Awakening, Fates, Three Houses, and a dash of heroes, but with a boring plot. And I will attribute a good chunk of that to the main character attitude towards different events. At least the male counterpart seems depressed as heck, and that is due to the kind of design he has. Well, it is just a character design, right? What happens if we choose the female counterpart? Oh, I've seen this before. If you have played Fire Emblems, there are events that repeat themselves over and over again, and there are countless memes about them, but they can easily be overlooked because they have a particular way to represent them. Nonetheless, I cannot find excuses to bring a boring story. There are things that do not really add up to it. As the heroes of previous games, it feels as if this game is pretty much an advertisement, because it feels a bit hollow the way they were used. I will say that just the beginning and some parts at the end were entertaining, but many other events are quite forgettable, aside from those that have similarities with older entries. And another thing that pretty much put the last nail in the coffin was the support events. They weren't really good. If we compare it with Fates, that it doesn't have the strongest story, at least I remember that these support events were entertaining to read. Some were fun, dumb, horrible localization in some parts, but in general they were good, for a not so good story. However, in Engage, these supports feel quite boring, with over fanaticism or that they kind of repeat over and over again. I can live with characters not being able to get a support or stuff like that, those were pretty much the older entries, but at least the support events were much more entertaining or interesting than these ones. At best, I can say that the story is bad. To me, it is a hit. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. If there is something that this game does extremely well, it's in this category. It uses the classic mechanics in Fire Emblems and once again comes back with a classic mechanic that was a bit forgotten, the weapon strangle, but with a nice twist. You are able to break your opponent's stance if you attack with the right weapon. Of course, this works in both ways, and it adds interesting ways to play with pretty much any unit. I bring this particular point because in previous entries there were some units that were pretty much useless, as generals, armored knights, this in maddening difficulty. In normal and hard mode you can still do whatever you want, and that's cool, but once you jump into maddening difficulties is where your skills are going to be tested. And if I have to say, this is the game where you can cheese things real hard, or bring interesting strategies in case you like to do things on your own. Of course, I will only recommend this to those who are patient enough to strategize a lot. For other mechanics, of course, as it is the turn of the rings and previous heroes to shine once again, 
your characters are able to fuse with them and bring special powers. Some are really broken and some are just good. This also adds a lot of strategies in different maps, as well as ways to pretty much end up losing lots of characters in one turn if you do not pay attention. In short, the game balance is extraordinary. It brings great challenges as well as rewarding tactics. Once you have finished the usual battles, you can explore a bit around, gather items, bond points, create generic rings, skills and some other things. And here's where we get into the part that I am not so fond of, the gacha mechanics. In this case, to get rings. I know they like to bring the Iron Jesus in many things, but yeah, I don't like these crappy mechanics. I do wonder if this is the hero's legacy in motion. However, in your base of operations, let's call it that way, we can run around, get different items, do dumb activities to kill time or lose time, and train our characters to later promote them into different things. Not as restrictive as older entries, but definitely interesting. If there is something that I don't like about this game, it's just the gacha mechanics. Other than that, I believe Engage brings the best parts of different entries and adapts new ones for an interesting gameplay. A topic that I don't care anymore is the permadeath. It is, was a cool mechanic, but in general, if people do not like it and it is a stopper for them to enjoy the game, fine by me. At the end of the day, if you want to put your knowledge and skills to the test, you can play it in Maddening with the classic gameplay. This is a 9.5 to me. For the graphics, here I usually like to check the general performance, colors, movements, designs, and so on. This is another point where it improves quite a bit from the previous entries. While it is the Switch, and its colors look a bit washed up, in my opinion the game looks amazing. And if there is something that I like the most, are the characters' action while in combat. I usually keep these animations on, and I like to look at them, but if there is a Fire Emblem where I have enjoyed that a lot, is this one. There is something in the fluidity of the moves that catches my eyes a lot. On that front, I have not so much to say. I also like the kind of environment that we're used in general. All of them are quite unique, as well as subtle details. Unfortunately, there is a big negative part for me, and that is the design of many characters. Here, just to point at two of them, I have no idea what they were thinking about these designs. It is more like they wanted to bring a clown to the game, and this was disappointing because if there was something that I like a lot in Fire Emblem, is that they were, in the most part, serious about some things. If this were an idea factory game, I wouldn't mind, but that is not the case. It is an 8 for me. And last but not least, it's music. I have mixed feelings on this one, but let's go by parts. The beginning of the game is good. I like the kind of soundtrack that the game delivers. It is chill and has its moments where it shines. This of course with their particular parts that repeat in several tracks, which I don't mind. And they once again come back to something similar as Awakening and Fates with combat tracks. I bring this point because I remember some people saying that the Three Houses combat tracks were perhaps a bit too much and you couldn't appreciate some parts of the original tracks. Yeah, I agree, some were perhaps a bit too much. So the first part of the game has a good execution, it delivers once again cool tracks, but later I think it needed something much stronger in comparison with older entries, just to give some examples, Crimean Army Sortie, For Liberty, Destiny, Not Justice, Chasing Daybreak. Tracks that you know it is a war, which usually happens in the middle of the game, but here I didn't find those tracks, and it made me have the impression that this conflict was a kind of lighthearted one. And that last map track was meh, at the very least to me. I like different kind of electronic tracks, but this one was a bit too generic. Some parts are good, but then around one minute and a half later it just lost me. The OST is a 7.5. Has good parts, but also some others are really forgettable. Fire Emblem Engage final score is a 7.7. .7. I would recommend this game to those that want to jump into strategic RPGs. It has extraordinary mechanics, but if you are also looking for a good story, then I will say keep your expectations low. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.